Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we live and garden here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today is a gorgeous day, sunny blue skies, cool air, no humidity. It's a perfect day for planting and I have lots of things to plant. So let's get to it. Over here in my plant stash, I've got several dahlias that I had started. This is a gallery singer. This is a yellow star cactus. This is another gallery singer and another yellow star cactus. And the yellow stars are actually putting up flower stalks. They need to get into the ground. And these gallery singers also need to get into the ground. So I'm gonna be taking those up and find new spots for those. I have a dozen liatris that need to get in. So I'm gonna be looking for spots for those. I have lots of other things as well, but my primary focus right now is gonna be these four dahlias and those dozen liatris. Let's get to it. Now the gallery singer dahlias only get to be about a foot, maybe 15 inches tall and wide. So I think they're great for the front of the border. So I'm gonna put two of them right here. I do have a third pot of them down there on the driveway, but it hasn't sprouted. So I'm thinking that it's not going to um, give me any plant this year. So I'm gonna just gonna plant these two here. If that other one does end up sprouting, I'll um, stick it in here somewhere in a pleasing way. But, uh, so that's where the two gallery singers is gonna go. Back here, I'll show you back behind in there, inside the Arbor Garden, where the two yellow stars are gonna go. But for now, gallery singers right here. This daylily is one I don't give one wit about. I could care less about this daylily, so I'll leave it here, but I'm not gonna worry about it. And then right here is the carcass of an agastache that I had in here last year, but it didn't come back. So there we go. Biotone, like always. Oh, look, doesn't wanna come out. There we go, two gallery singers. So if that third one does uh, come up, I'll put it right here. Um, and then I have here, these are two calamint plants. These get nice white spikes of flowers that the, uh, um, what am I trying to say? Pollinators really love on this. Three um, golden jubilee hyssops, those will have purple spikes on them. And then the uh, foxgloves are just going gangbusters back there. Let me pull the camera up so you can see them. Look at that, oh, awesome. Really, really, really happy with the foxgloves this year. Okay, so over here is where I wanna put the yellow star cactus um, dahlia. So that's it right there. I wanna put it in that spot, kind of under this tree, right beside the glads. Now these glads are deep cherry red and beautiful purple. So purple, red, and yellow, that is gonna be my color scheme for this area right here. Um, I have a summer crush hydrangea right here that's being encroached upon by this phlox. So I think, even though it's in the middle of its flowering, I'm gonna dig this up and move it back to there so that the hydrangea doesn't get eaten up by that phlox. And then that daylily right there, I think I'm just gonna take it out. I don't care for daylilies and um, yeah, it's only there because I had it and wanted to stick it somewhere. So, uh, but now that the garden is filling in, I think I can move that to somewhere else or just take it out. And then back in there, there are some denim and lace Russian sages back there that'll get purple spikes on it. And then this is the instant karma elderberry. It'll fill out and um, be nice variegated foliage there. So this is going to be a really full section of the garden this year, which I'm really happy about. So let me just get going, moving this phlox back to there, taking the daylily out and putting in the yellow star cactus, Dahlia. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that, but it's gonna go out there for now. All right. And now this phlox is coming out. This is the worst time ever to move a phlox while it's in bloom. I don't recommend to you that you do that. 
whatever. It is what it is, so hopefully just put it back here where this day really was. And settle in gorgeously without too much trouble. Hopefully. Clean up this a little bit. And that'll give this guy a little bit more room to thrive. Yeah, that's better. We put a little biotone on this guy so he can root in pretty well. ahead and thrive there that'd be great and now this dahlia Ooh, I hope it didn't break any of it <laughs> how are you doing little guy you're doing all right okay you wait right there give you a spot right here somewhere near here Watch where I'm putting my feet in here, and watch where I'm putting my shovel. Good. This guy is going to need staking, so I'm going to have to go get a stake to put near him. Ooh, look at that. It's awesome. All right, so for staking, I'm going to use this rebar. And it's a little bigger than I need it right now, but I think this guy's going to grow pretty big over the season. So... It won't be too big by the end of the season. There we go. Nice and sturdy. All right, I'm just tying this on there loosely. As it grows, I'll uh, tie it onto here more thoroughly but for now totally good my second yellow star cactus type dahlia is going to go i think just right here now these are again red and purple gladiolus that will be blooming in a little bit the yellow will go nicely with that in kind of a royal garden theme and also we've got other little things in here these will be blooming white uh, on these red and green plants and the red of the laura petalum back there is going to look nice so i think the nice yellow accent right here will be really nice so that's where that's going to go last year in this spot i had uh annual status but i've put my status out front this year so this is empty and ready for something i'm going to go put it toward the back so that i do have room to put something in front of it since i do expect it to get kind of tall like three and a half feet or so Something like that. I decided to put some of my seedlings out in the front yard. Out here, this is in the north shrub border. You can see behind that Wygela, I'm putting some uh, zinnias. Those are a senora variety and I think they're not too close together but I guess we'll find out won't we? Over here by the Juliet Rose and the Miss Kim Lilac is where I've decided to put in some Nicotiana. 
I have about two dozen Nicotiana spread around the front yard, but here are some of them, kind of between the soft touch holly and the Lakothui and the uh, monkshood back in there. Out by the front walk, um, I decided to put in some more zinnias and also that's where I've put some ageratum. I think there's zinnias down in there amongst all those old daffodils and hyacinths. Hard to see, sorry about that. And then here on the front corner, this is the corner hill, um, I put in some zinnias out here as well. I think these are my Benary's Giant Red variety. I think there's uh, eight or ten of them there. Hopefully they'll be gorgeous. And then up here by the house, by that smoke bush, I put in some more Nicotiana down underneath there. There were some spare spaces down here on the ground near the allium and uh, behind that soft touch holly to the right of the lemon thread cypress. So Nicotiana in there as well. Sorry about the harsh sunlight. It's right in the middle of the day right now. Um, over in this bed, uh, I've got a Laura Petalum shrub that died. So I'm gonna take that out. And then I have several lilies here, foxgloves, snapdragons. These are uh, firepower nandinas, three of those, and more lilies there. And so I'm thinking that the liatris would be a nice accent with the lilies. So I'm actually gonna plant half of them up here with these lilies and half of them down there with those lilies. I think that the foliage will complement each other. They're very similar foliage. The lilies are a little bit more bold than the liatris, but also the spike flowers from the liatris will look nice in front of the lilies. So I'm hoping that'll be a nice combination. I might need to move a couple of things around to accomplish it, but that's my goal here. So first, let me get out this more petalum that died over the winter. Put them in a clump, and uh, I think that's the nicest presentation of liatris is when they're very close together. Now that they're in the soil, they'll be getting better nutrients, better water, and they'll perk up and stand up tall soon enough. Let's not worry about them at all. Might need to put a little bit more mulch in that area, but that's pretty good for now. Um, these are Liriope that they're really just taking up space here. I needed a place to put them, so I put them there. I can put them somewhere else. That looks like a foxglove. I'll let it grow for next year. Maybe out of there. All right, I'm going to put a couple of these back here. And I can just stick with my hands. There we go. Now I have these three varieties. I can, well, there's actually a lot more than three here, but I can put these somewhere. Where should I put them? How about. Well, and with that, I think I'm gonna call this video done. 
I'm just getting all of my plant stash put into my ground and I'm just doing that in bits and pieces. Every day I put another plant in the ground somewhere here, there and everywhere. And I hope that you're doing the same in your gardens. I hope that your plant stash is dwindling so that your garden is being filled up. So have a wonderful day in your garden, friends, and I'll see you again in another video real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.